I suppose where we live, we had to do. We had to be fairly vigilant with levy banks because our house is probably half a meter below a uh, fifty-six flood level, or probably was a bit more below than what the last you know peak river was. So we had to maintain levies, and yeah, within that part of the farm. Uh, it probably come within five centimetres of topping the levees. So, and if it had to top the levees, we're on a floodplain, so it would have been impacted there. And then another part of our farm, sort of further north towards Coolanong or Boundary Bend, it's sort of a part of a natural floodway, so it had a lot of water that went across it, so some crops were affected and impacted there. Being aware, you know, because our house was at risk, um, so like having contingency plans, like everything we can get up off the ground, what can we do? So a lot of work you know, went into that and, you know, if the kids can't get to school on the bus, what are we going to do? And, yeah, it, it was very... Sort of, and even ironically, things like, you know, we couldn't use river water and we ran out of water. And so then to get a water tanker in that could get over the levee, that was the next challenge. So a lot of things that you just don't imagine would come up as a challenge actually presented themselves. But the schooling wasn't impacted, yep. um, very fortunately. And we did sort of try to, you know, you try to buffer it for them and keep, they don't, it's a stress that they don't need to deal with. Um, but they, they do pick up more than you think. They hear the conversations and... Yeah, we have one now, a six-year-old, tell us one night that, well, I had a dream last night that the floods were coming from this direction and this direction and this direction. And, and, and he, he was, he was correct with the directions and he said, I think if it comes, it might come from there first. So he was actually quite perceptive with what was Obviously the going conversations on. that were happening around yeah. the house and whatever else. So yeah. 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 There was also the community impact as well, like everybody coming together to actually obviously, you know, like you've got small groups of farmers or residents who are living in one area going, Well, these are the risks to our area. So trying to manage and work together and have a plan For the good as of a the group community. in an altruistic sense. So you know, well, who's got a truck? Well, I've got a truck. I've got an excavator. You know, let's let's get in someone to do the surveying to check out all the levels and yeah, it was actually quite like a yeah, lot. Yeah, the community um, did a good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. a lot went into it. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So with some really proactive people there that really dedicate a lot of their own time, you know, yeah. for the good of everyone, and <clears throat> yeah, it probably was yeah com community driven in terms of the response. So a lot of the actions that really happen. They were established well before there was any emergency services involved. Like mm. Pretty much it was locals going, well, that levy needs to be done up. That one needs to be done up. They're all proactive because they've lived in the community for you know, some 30 years, but others 60, 70 years. It's not their first rodeo. They've seen it before. So, yeah, they're pretty much going, well, last time this happened, we had to do this, this and this. So they really know what to look for. And, you know, pretty much they sort of activated a plan that everyone was able to follow. Mm.